So now I'm recording. Um, let's go back, share my screen back to the PowerPoint. So once again, this graph looked like this. This is three and this is negative one. We found out that that is the maximum. And if we plug, that's a negative one, by the way. If we plug negative one into this function, we got a positive 10. So our maximum was at 10. Our max was at negative one, 10. Our minimum, was right there and when we looked at the table or when we did minimum on our calculator our minimum our minimum was at two uh one our minimum went down to y1 y1 that's the the minimum so maximum and minimum we always refer to the y uh value of it all right uh, moving on. Okay, so we're going to do one more on the calculator. Okay, and so put this, put this into your calculator. X raised to the third power minus 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. And when we graph that, we're also using the interval of negative one and three. So I'm gonna to try to graph what I see between negative one and three. Here's negative one, here's three. Uh, it looks kind of like this. And this graph actually continues on. And from three, it continues on also. So we're just looking between negative one and three. So find the, let's find the minimum value. If you look at this graph, the minimum value is the lowest part of the graph. So on your calculator, let's find that minimum value. This is one of those I don't think I'd make you do uh, showing your work, but we have to be able to find that minimum value there. And you may have to be doing this on a calculator So what is my minimum value? Negative eight, two negative eight. No, uh, you're rounding now. We only rounded the other one because it was really close to whatever number we were doing. So this, this, I mean, the actual minimum, the X value for the minimum is neg uh, or positive, right? It's yeah. a positive 1.868 uh, and then a negative 8.064, something like that. If we did this on a test or the homework, they'd have you round it to a certain amount of decimal places. So that is the minimum there. So that is the minimum. What button did you press on the calculator to find the minimum? 
Okay. Uh, you have to hit second trace. Second trace. Okay. I'm going to do it again on my calculator. If anybody else got something different, let me know. <laughs> uh, let me pull up my other camera again. So this is the function. Hopefully I typed it in correctly. Mm -hmm. And second trace and then go down to minimum. Uh, and we know the minimum somewhere right there. So I have to arrow over because you got to get to the left side of the minimum. So I'm on the left side of the minimum. I hit enter. Now I got to go to the right side, the right boundary. So this is past the right, you know, the minimum. Hit enter. Then it says guess. So I'm just arrowing over and you guess, but you don't have to guess. You could just hit enter again. If I hit enter, it finds my minimum at x is 1.868 and the y is at negative 8.064. Okay, I got it. Okay. Everybody else okay with that? Just get back to my other camera. All right, so back to here so we said our do i have to draw this again <laughs> as soon as i leave it i guess it erases it, it all so this was the graph that we had there's negative one and this was three something like that so we said this minimum the, the Y value, let's just look at the Y values, negative 8.06. Uh, and, and if we wanted to do the X value, the X value was 1.87 if I rounded it to two decimal places. Um, now, what is the maximum here? Anybody have an answer for the maximum? Anybody want to type it in to the chat box? If I can find my chat box. It's not letting me look at the chat box when I'm here for some reason. Yeah, when I'm sharing, it's not letting me go to the chat box. Well, the maximum is the highest spot on our graph between this interval, and this is the highest spot on our graph at three. So if you go to three, the highest spot on our graph is negative two. So negative two is our maximum and negative 8.06 is our minimum for this graph. So there are parts that you will have to use your calculator for. Uh, and that was that. All right. Um, next problem. Finding relative maximum and minimum. So there's a difference between maximum and minimum extremas, and there's a difference between relative maximum and extremas. So let me just show you an example. If I draw this, this graph, And I have these endpoints. Uh, let me draw it like this. If I have these endpoints, this would be the minimum. This up here would be the maximum, the highest y value. This is the lowest y value. However, the hills and valleys, this is a relative maximum. Do you see it's a, it's a hill, it goes up, it's at the highest point, then it's going down. 
So we call that not a maximum, but it's relative. It's a relative maximum to that little, this little hill that we have. And then if we look down here, that's a minimum, a relative minimum. That's a valley. And this is a, a relative maximum. That's a peak. And then it goes back down. Uh, once again, at some point, it, it has a, a relative minimum here. And then we call this a, not only a relative maximum, it's a, it's a valley or a peak, but it's the absolute maximum, right? If you look at this graph, it's also, it's not only a maximum, but it's also a relative maximum. Uh, a maximum is definitely better than a relative maximum because maximum means it's the highest point of the graph. A relative maximum just means it's a peak somewhere on the graph. So relatives, when we say relative maximum or minimum, it's a valley or a peak on a graph, but a maximum or a minimum is the ab, you know the absolute maximum or minimum on a graph. This is the absolute lowest point in the graph. This is the absolute highest point on the graph. Those are maximum and minimums. The other valleys and peaks we call relative. So now that we have that done, let's look at this graph here. Um, and the way you could do this without graphing it, I mean on your calculator, is let's uh, factor out an x square. Um, and we have a zero at x square equals zero, so x equals zero. There's a zero there, and we have a zero, x minus three equals zero, take three to the other side uh, at three. So we know if we look at this graph, we have an x-intercept or a zero at zero, and we have one at three. Um, this is an x3 graph, so it goes up on the right and down on the left. The endpoints uh, for an x to the third graph look like this. Um, and so the graph goes through here, uh, x3, since it's a power of one, goes through there. And this one kind of like bounces off somehow here uh, because it's an x squared. Even power zeros, remember, bounce off and start heading back down a little bit. Uh, so the graph kind of looks like this. Okay, now the, the cool thing about uh, these these peaks and valleys. Can you s tell me something about this point? What if I call it a peak? What else can I call it? Is there something that we've called that in the past? Is it a maximum? Yeah, it's a it's a relative maximum, but we've called it something else in the past. It starts with a C. I think we've talked about it. Have we talked about critical values? Yes or no? I don't remember. Critical values are when the first derivative equals zero, right? I mean, look at the slope, the, when the slope equals zero. Right? The slope at this point is right here, but the slope at a peak is zero, is a horizontal line. The slopes at all these peaks are horizontal lines. We call them critical values. So critical values are when your slope is zero. Critical values are when your slope equals zero, when your first derivative equals zero. So that's kind of important. So now that we have our x-intercepts, I'm, I'm going to, let me erase some of this. Do, 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 do. So we want to find the first derivative of this, this function, and then we'll find the slope uh, where the slopes are uh, zero. Uh, this becomes 3x minus 6, or 3x squared, sorry, minus 6x, right? If you take the derivative of this, bring the 3, subtract 1. Take the derivative of this, you get negative 6, subtract 1, you get x. 
make this. So this is the first derivative over the slope. Where are the slopes equal to zero? Well, I can factor out 3x out of here. If I factor a 3x out of both of these, I get x minus 2 left over 3x. So 3x uh, equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0, so x equals 2. So we have two critical numbers, um, x equals 0. These are critical numbers, critical. That's where critical numbers are where our slope equals 0. So we know our slope equals 0 here and at x equals 2. You know, we don't know. We didn't know how far down it went. So that's, I, I could have drawn it here. It could go down way here. But we know right there our slope is 0 at x2. Well, we can find uh, how far down it goes by plugging 2 back into the original equation. So if I plug, the, the function was this, if I plug 2 back into the original equation, I get 4 minus 12, which equals a negative 8. So do you see this goes all the way down to negative 8? And um, that is a relative minimum, right? Do you see it? it's going down here? Uh, so that's a relative minimum there. It's a, it's, a, it's a little valley, and then it starts going back up. Uh, and this point here is, since it, it, we know it bounced off of it, uh, that is a peak. Uh, and we're going to call that a relative maximum. So we can find relative minimums and maximums by taking the first derivative and find out where the first derivative equals zero. So I took the first function and set it equal to zero to find the x-intercepts. And then I knew the end function of this graph was x to the 3. I knew the right side goes up for x to the 3 and the left side goes down. Uh, and then you can draw it. And as soon as you find out, it will it goes through this point and it goes down to negative eight because we, we plugged in, uh, we found out that two was a critical number where in other words, that's a valley, the very bottom of the valley. And it, the y value goes down to negative eight, it comes back up. Since this was an x squared graph, the, or this is x squared uh, zero, where the zero was x squared, anytime you have a square or an even power zero, it bounces off and goes back down. It bounces off and goes back down. For I an odd was a cubed. Say that again. I thought it was a cubed, uh, x cubed. It is the original function. It is, it, it is cubed, but when we did the when we di when we I, I erased it, but when we did when we x three minus three x squared, when we f found a zeros, where does this function? Uh, where does this function? Uh oh. That's not good. What we did first, what we did first was find out, we, we factored this out. We wanted to find out where the, the, the zeros are, the x-intercepts. I'm trying to find my pen, okay. So first we try to find out where the x-intercepts were and we factored this out. And the x-intercepts were at 0 and x minus 3 equals 0. So the x-intercepts were at 3 and 0. And do you see the x-intercept has a square? The x-intercept 0 has a square on it. When it has a square, the, the graph bounces off of that x-intercept. That's from algebra. And here, it just, it doesn't have a square. There's a power of one there. So on x equals three, it, it, it goes through, the graph goes through. That's from algebra. Everybody remember that? Where if this is a power of two, power of four, power of six, for the x-intercepts, it bounces off. 
to even power it bounces off the x intercept for an for a, a, a odd power like this has an odd power of one if it had a three or a five it would go through so now that i know those you see i can put i have an x intercept at zero and i have an x intercept at three now I look, this is x to the third. I know the end point, the right side for x to the third goes up and the left side goes down. That's what, uh, uh, right? That's what a x to the third graph looks like. The right side goes up and the left side goes down. Uh, we go through here, x3 it goes through and we found out that it goes down to negative eight when we took the first derivative. It comes up to the x square. This is the zero with the x square. It bounces off to that, and then it keeps on going down. So odd powers, the graph goes through it. Even powers, the graph bounces off of it. So that's how we got this. Then we took the first derivative, and we set the first derivative equal to 0 to find out where where the the slopes are zero on the graph. Remember, first derivative is the slopes of zero. And we factored out a 3x and got x minus 2. And we said, OK, x equals 0 is a critical number. And x equals 2 is a critical number. There's 2 and there's 0. This is a critical number. In other words, it's a relative maximum or minimum. This is a minimum, so that's a relative minimum. This is a highest point, it's a peak because it goes back down, so we call that a relative maximum. To find the relative minimum and maximum, you take this two and put it back into the original equation. That's how we got negative eight. Put zero back into the equation and we got y zero. So our relative maximum is at 0, 0. Our relative minimum is at 2, negative 8. Does that make more sense? So we're first finding those x-intercepts, and then we're going to take the derivative of that function and set it equal to 0 to find the slopes. Now, if you put this in your, on your calculator, you should see the same graph that we just did. I'm going to just take a quick check. This is look at it. X raised to the third minus 3x squared and graph it. And it looks like the same graph that we just did. I mean, it's a little prettier than mine, but. <laughs> and you can verify those minimum and maximums. Oh, let me check. I, I'm not verifying it. I don't see that. Uh, I got something different. It's because when you did. Oh, yeah, I, go ahead third instead of to the you put to x squared instead of x cubed and that's okay. what it's going back to is because right. eight instead of four yeah so the 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 the, the we know this this is not negative eight <laughs> i'm glad we checked it on a calculator if you plug two back into this function here let's plug two i must have did something wrong yeah like she said uh minus i was telling you it was supposed to be the original cubed instead Oh, oh, that's what you're telling me. Okay. So this is 8 minus 12, which is negative 4. So this matches our relative minimum then is negative 4. Thank you. You got to scream louder at me. <laughs> uh, so yes, that, that, so that and I'm verifying that with my calculator. When you go to 2 on the table, it says negative 4. So that goes down to that, that relative minimum was at negative 4. You plug it back into the original problem. Uh, and that tells you how low or high the graph is, or the y value of that graph at that point. All right, so let's try another one. Any other questions on that one? Let's try another one. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
oh, this is the same one. Uh, this slide just this slide just says, "Hey, relative extremas uh, happen only at critical numbers. So when you take the first derivative and set it equal to zero, we know those are a relative extremas, either a relative maximum or a relative minimum. So we know that relative extremas only happen at critical numbers. However, and there's a little star down here." All critical numbers that we find, even though there, it says numbers, <laughs> all critical numbers that we find do not produce a relative extremis. So relative extremis only happen at critical numbers, but not all critical numbers produce relative extremis. Uh, it's kind of like, what? Uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll see an example in the homework like that. So just know when to, a relative extrema happens when we take a, when we find a critical number. Um, and there's one more thing. I, uh, th this is a quick slide. There's no work really I want to show. We looked at this before, um, the absolute value function. So uh, this is a relative extrema, it's a relative minimum, uh, but it's not a critical number. So we already said all critical numbers produce relative extremas. We look at this graph, we know that's a relative minimum. It's a it's a valley, right? It goes down, it's a valley, and then it starts going up. So it's, it has a minimum there. Why isn't that a critical number? Why is this not critical? We went over this already in the past. I'm just wondering if anybody remembers. Because it doesn't have a limit? Yeah, exactly. Because remember, we said you can't take the derivative of sharp points. There were three things we couldn't take derivatives of. Um, like um, I know one of them was a very sharp point absolute fu value function. Uh, we try to take the, de the derivative of this using limits. And if you notice, uh, we ended up with uh, approaching from the left negative one, approaching for the right positive one. So they don't approach the same number. So we can't, so there's no derivative. So. Uh, we, we can't take the derivative at this point. There's no limit there. Uh, so that this was one of those examples that says all critical numbers are relative extremas, but all relative extremas like this one is not a critical number. So that was just an example of showing that. And I actually think that might be a, a, like a homework question. All right, so I think we have at least two more problems to look at. Things should go a little bit smoother <laughs> as we move on throughout the, uh, uh, the, the weeks here. Uh, find the extrema. So uh, let's find, like they said, the uh, critical numbers first. Let's find the critical numbers. How do I find a critical number? Take the derivative? Yes, first derivative equals to zero. Set the first derivative equal to zero. Okay, so we're gonna take the first derivative. Of How come my pen won't turn a different color? That's weird. It won't change colors. Okay, there it goes. Uh, the first derivative of this is 12x to the third minus 12x squared. Right, bring the four, subtract one, bring the three, subtract one, uh, factor out a 12x square, and I'm left with x minus one equals zero. So one of our critical numbers, uh, 12x squared equals zero, so x equals zero. Divide by 12 and take the square root, you still get x equals zero. One of our critical numbers is x equals zero. The other critical number 
is one. Um, now let's plug those two numbers into the original problem to see uh, what they are. Uh, how high or how low they go. Um, and by the way, this is this kind of, uh, uh, well, let's just do that first and I'm gonna talk about this question right up here. So we're gonna plug in zero first. If we plug zero in, we get y equals zero. What do we get when we plug one into there? When I plug one into here, three times one to the fourth is three, one to the third is one times negative four. Uh, would everybody agree I get a y equals negative one? Yep. Okay, so everybody agreed? You speak for everybody? <laughs> it's okay. You're not, you're not required to have a microphone or a, or a, a webcam. Uh, it'd be nice if more people had microphones and wanted to talk every now and then. Uh, now, we still have more, though. It says find the extremas. Extremas are not relative. Extremas are, are the highest point. So when we just say extrema without saying relative, we're looking for the highest point on the graph and the lowest point on the graph. So extremas are the, the highest and the lowest. If we said relative extremas, then we'll look for, for all valleys and peaks. So um, let's take a look. I'm, I don't want to graph this yet. I don't want to graph this yet on my calculator. So I'm going to erase this. OK, so um, if I drew this graph, it, from what I know, do you see how the highest power is x4? So I know an x4 graph, by the way, has the endpoints where they're both up. Uh, you know, x squared graph, x4, x6 have both endpoints up like that. Uh, we have one of the critical, a critical uh, number at zero, that's a, at x0, and, we, and x actually 0, 0, we know that's a critical number. And we have a critical number at x1, y negative 1. Here's 1, y negative 1. Um, so the only thing we don't know is about the x-intercepts. And we didn't really calculate those out. Um, I can if I want, but I'm not too worried about it. I know the graph. Uh, goes down here somewhere. By the way, it's going to probably, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work. It's, it's probably going to do something like this. Uh, we're we're going to look at it here in a second on a calculator. Um, but we have an interval from negative 1 to two, so we're looking at a negative one to two interval. So since we're doing that, the left endpoint would be negative one. This is the left endpoint. So let's now plug negative one into the original graph. And find out what we get. Negative 1 to the fourth power is 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 1 to the third power is negative 1 times a negative 4 is a, neg a positive, set of positive 4. So I think we get 7. So at negative 1, I think this graph is as high as 7. And the left endpoint is x equals negative 1, and then the y goes as high as 7. The right endpoint is at x equals 2. And at x equals 2, let's see what y equals. Put a 2 in there. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 times 3 is 48. Uh, 2 to the third is 8 times 4 is a negative 32. So that goes as high as 16. 
So even though I didn't draw this correctly, this graph at two goes as high as 16. So we're looking for the highest and lowest points of these, this graph. Um, obviously, this is the maximum. This is the highest point, the highest Y value. And the lowest Y value looks right here. This is the minimum. So let's put that in our graph now and just verify that. Let me erase this, make it look a little better. Y equals 3x squared, x4, sorry, x raised to the fourth, minus 4x four raised to the third. And I graph it, boy, it's a kind of, let me change my window so I can see it a little bit better. And there's a graph. It, it pretty much looks like I, 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 let me choose a different color. It looks the same thing I did here at some point. Uh, at, it has a one and a two. At one, there was a minimum and then it went, it went way up here before it got to two. It went way up there. Uh, same thing here. It looked like this. It, it looked like that. Same thing. So if you look, the highest point on the graph is at two, where it was way up here at 16. If you go to two on your graph, uh, it went way up really quick. Uh, and then if you go, the lowest point on your graph was that spot right there. So that, that negative one was the lowest point. And Y16 for two, because it was interval of two, uh, was the highest spot. So on the homework, I think they'll do this. Uh, find the extremas. You first have to find the critical numbers and find the Y values. Find the endpoints. If you're in an interval, find the endpoints. And then whichever number is the highest is the maximum. Whichever number is the lowest is the minimum. Because if there was a number lower than that, uh, it would be it would find it would be found out either through an endpoint or through a uh, slope of zero, through a critical number. Everybody okay with that? All right, let's try. I think there's a, one more that we have. Oh, look, it doesn't want to, why doesn't it want Boy, why didn't it want to get rid of that? Did I do something weird? There we go. All right, so. I wonder the difference between those annotations. I think this is the last problem, whatever. Yeah, this is the last problem. So we're going to do the same thing <laughs> as we did in the last problem. Find the extremists. Find the highest and lowest point on the graph. We're in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Uh, so first, apparently, there are four critical numbers <laughs> because I have four little spots there. So to find the critical numbers, you take the first derivative. Uh, derivative of sine is cosine x. Two cosine x. Derivative of cosine. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. Yeah, negative sine. Uh, oh, it, oh, wait a minute. That's good. Uh, it's a negative sine. What's a, what's a derivative? Oh, why don't we... What's the derivative of cosine two x? If I have a function that's cosine two x, the derivative of this is like taking the cosine of u. The cosine of u is negative sine u 
u prime. If u is 2x, u prime is 2. So the derivative of this is negative sine 2x, and then u is 2. So we bring the 2 in front, negative 2 sine 2x. Does everybody see how I did the derivative of that using the chain rule? Since there's more than just an x in here, you have to use a chain rule. You have to say cosine of u. Uh, and the cosine of u, the derivative of that is a negative sine u then du. If u is 2x, du is 2. Uh, so this, and since we have a negative and a negative, when we take the derivative, negative and negative change it to a positive, uh, 2 sine 2x. And we set this equal to 0. Did I do that right? Let me, give me a second. I think this is in the book somewhere. Yes. Oh, Lord, why did we do this one? Would that be a plus sign or a negative sign in between? It's a plus sign because in the original problem, there was a negative, but when we took the derivative, do you see how we ended up with a negative? Negative and a negative changed it to a plus. Okay. Okay. See, there was a negative originally, and the derivative of, of a negative cosine, or the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it's a negative negative to change it to a plus. So this is what we ended up with. Now, um, let me show you what the book does because the book gets a little crazy sometimes. They change this. Does the sine of 2x, somewhere on our trig formula sheet, look for the changing the sine of 2x. To, to something else, because we, we don't want 2x and we have an x over there. Uh, I'm looking at my trig formula sheet somewhere in here. I know I have one. Yeah, it's so messy. Do, do you see what the sign of 2x is? I see it on my tr trig formula sheet. Uh, on the sh formula sheet, trig formula sheet, the sine of 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. So did everybody find that on, on the sine of 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta? So this stays the same. This is 2 times 2, sine of 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. So this becomes 2 cosine x plus 4 sine x cosine x. Now, um, the, 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 the reason, why did I do that? Can anybody tell me why I did that? Why did I use that trig function? The reason why is because I have to make this equal to zero. And there is no way to factor this out when we make it equal to zero. So far, uh, we try to factor things out and set it equal to zero. There's no way of making a 2x and a cosine x, the way it's set up right now, equal to zero, factor that out so we can find our critical numbers. But here we can. Do you see how I can factor out a cosine x out of both of these? Not only a cosine x, a two cosine x. So I'm factoring two cosine x out of that. When I divide each of those by two cosine x, I get one plus two sine x. Does everybody see how if I, if I factor out a cosine x and a cosine x, if I take it out, or not a cosine x, a two cosine x, this is a four, so I'm taking, I'm dividing it by two, cosine x. These cancel, and then that changes to a two. And I have the two cosine x. Now I have it equal to zero. So do you see, you, in order to get the, that first derivative equal to zero, you have to factor something out to make it equal to zero. Uh, that's the best way to do it, if, if, if possible. Uh, and so from there, we have two things multiplied together and the answer is zero. I can say two cosine x equals zero. 
divide both sides by two, I still get cosine x equals zero. Uh, also, I got one plus two sine x equals zero. Take the one to the other side by subtracting one. Two sine x equals negative one. Divide by two and sine x equals negative one half. So on your unit circle, where is cosine x equal to zero? Where does the cosine equal zero? On your unit circle. I don't know if I can see my unit circle. Remember cosine are the x values So where are the cosine x equal to zero on your unit circle? You guys thought you weren't going to have to bring anything to this class, right? Over two. Pi over two, that's one critical number. Uh, there should be another one on there. Three pi over two? Yeah, see, we're, we're, because we're going through the interval zero and pi over two. Three pi over two is the other critical number. Um, now we need to find where, so we found these two critical numbers. We found both of those critical numbers here and here. Now we need to find the two critical numbers where sine x equals one half and sine is the, the y values. So where on the unit circle are the y values equal to negative one half? Seven pi over six. Seven pi over six. Mm. Yes. Eleven yeah. pi over six. Seven pi over six and eleven pi over six. Eleven pi over six. So these are our four critical values. Those are our four critical values there. Mm -hmm. uh, our four critical numbers. Okay, so going back to the original problem. Doo, 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 doo. So on our calculator now, we're going to plug in pi over two and pi over two, by the way, two times, that's two times pi over two now. So let's put that into our calculator. Two times sine, of pi over two minus cosine of two times pi divided by two. By the way, that's just pi, right? Two, two, one, but anyway, pi over two and when you type it into your calculator, do you get a y value equal to three? Because I did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, everybody okay with that? Yes. Okay, so right here you have to type in two times pi over two on your calculator. So two sine parentheses pi over two minus cosine parentheses two times pi over two parentheses and you get three. So now I'm gonna do uh, three pi over two. If I put three pi over two in there, three pi over two and three pi over two in there, I'm going to cheat by looking at the book this time and not plug it in my calculator. I get negative one. Mm -hmm. If anybody's following along and not getting these numbers, let me know. I can show you on the calculator or we'll figure out what you're typing in wrong. Calculator. Say that again. Can you show me on the calculator? Sure, sure. 
So I have no idea what we're uh, <laughs> we're typing in. I really need to set this up as a mount. There it goes. All right, so we're plugging in. Which one are we plugging in? Three pi over two? Yes. So our problem is two time parentheses or time sign of three pi divided by two minus cosine of two times three pi over two. Three pi over two. And we get negative one. Okay with that? Yes. Are you not getting those answers? Uh, make sure your mode is in radians. If, you, if you're in degree mode, you're not gonna get the answer. So when you go to mode on your calculator, make sure you're in radian mode when we're using radians, like pi and three pi, we're not using degrees. So for those of you who are not getting it, if you're not getting it and too afraid to yell out at me, uh, make sure you go to mode on your calculator and you're in radian mode. So then it'll work. All right. So now you made me erase everything I have. <laughs> Luckily, I have the book here. Our critical numbers, I'm going to, uh, we're pi over 2. And 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, we had negative 1. Pi over 2, we had 3. Uh, the other critical numbers were 7 pi over 6. And 11 pi over 6. And I'm just going to put what we got on a calculator for those. For uh, 7 pi over 6, we get negative 1 and a half or negative 3 over 2. Uh, and for 11 pi over 6, we get negative 3 over 2 also. Now, the right endpoint, uh, the right endpoint is 0. By the way, zero and two pi, the right endpoint is zero. The left endpoint, the right endpoint is x zero. When you plug zero into those functions, try it, you get a negative one. Uh-oh, what happened? What happened? I'm sorry. It just kicked me out. Why did it kick me out? All right, so I'm here. <laughs> I don't know why it kicked me out of there. So anyway, when you plug zero into the original function, you get negative one. If you plug two pi, which is the same as zero, it's the same spot on the unit circle, you get negative one also. So from here, where is our, our well, that does, that, where is our minimum? Where's our lowest number? Our lowest y value? Negative one and a half? Yes, we have two minimums here. They're both the same. So we have, the, these are two minimums, extremas, our minimums and maximums. 
we have two of them here. So we have two critical numbers that are minimum, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Our maximum is 3. If you look at all these numbers, the highest number is 3. That is our maximum. At the critical number pi over 2, our maximum is uh, 3. So once again, our maximum is at pi over two, and the maximum is three. Our minimum is at seven pi over six, and 11 pi over six, and our minimum is negative three halves. And that is 4.1. Um, once again, Thursday, I'm not going to cover anything because I have the videos for those already, uh, but I will be here to answer questions. So come Thursday with questions if you have them. Um, and I mean, even if you have questions and you just want to watch other people uh, ask questions, that's fine because sometimes their questions are your questions. Um, and, and Thursday, I am going to take roll. We're going to show up at 10. I'm going to take roll. And then after roll, I'll just hang around and answer questions because the two videos are there. So you have to go to week nine and watch those two videos, 4.2 and 4.3. Watch those videos and write down any questions that you have on the videos. Uh, any other questions before we go? Any will you be posting this video on Canvas? Yes, I will. It's going to take me a few minutes to, to get uh, uh, formatted, uh, and then I'll post it into the week eight module. So I will post this video in the week eight module, and I'll just list it as a uh, video for 4.1. OK. Anybody else have any questions? So once again, I'll see you on Thursday if you have questions. Even if you don't, I still need you to come check in with me. Did Jeffrey, did you ever show up? Jeffrey? Anybody see a name Jeffrey up there? I don't see Jeffrey. No. All right. So Jeffrey's the only one that didn't show up, apparently. All right. You guys have a good time. You can leave. Uh, I'll hang around for a few minutes if and any other last minute questions. Bye all. See you Thursday. Bye. Bye bye. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-